to Geek Domo. Today on Ramp Up to Star Citizen, we discuss Beta Win. What is it? And how Star Citizen is going to operate. Today's episode is closed captioned for the hearing impaired. Warning. I'm going to present all sides of this argument and weigh in on what I feel the right answer is. The reason I am making this video is I have read in several places, Reddit, the official forums, whatever, there is a strong, persistent misunderstanding about pay to win and star citizen. I hope to clarify it a little bit with this video. This is my opinion. If you can handle that, then let's begin. First off, let's talk about what pay to win is and how it goes in most games. Let's have an example of an MMO. Say this MMO is free to play. You can play this game for free and level up to level 100. Along your leveling, you find gear and loot. It enables you to perform very well, but you have to find better loot along the way as you level up. The game in this example also has a cash shop. In this shop, you can, at level 1, purchase an axe that has stats for level 100 on it. You can use this weapon in all PvE and PvP content. You can also purchase armor and spells that are equal to a level 100 character top tier stuff. The thing is, the items in this store cannot be earned by play, only cash purchase. We can see that a person with the means can buy the best gear in the game and surpass the player who cannot. This inequality actually crushes the game and can lead to failure. That example is pay to win. A person can purchase the best gear in the game that is unavailable to players that do not purchase it. They have a distinct advantage and the developers placate them by allowing them to dominate other players. Okay Domo, so how does this play out in Star Citizen? Are they doing the same thing? No. Star Citizen is a crowdfunded game, similar to other games that are funded by the community. In return for backing the game at an early stage, funders are given rewards. Most notable rewards are the ships. The ships we as backers have are identical to the ones you can earn in the game. What about the rare ones like the Idris Corvette? That is one badass ship. Can I earn that too? The answer is yes. It might take a while, but it will be available to regular players too. It will be a very rare ship and may be available through long perseverance but it is there. So as you see, Star Citizen is not pay to win. What about all of the forum posts and Reddit posts that say it is? Those people are just ignorant. They see that the current players right now have some of the best ship in the game and they assume it means they start out with an unfair advantage. They do, but only slightly. What do I mean? Say you have two players, player A, and player B. Both play Star Citizen, of course. In this example, we have two players, one cash rich, time poor, player A, the other time rich, cash poor, player B. The latter can only play one to two hours a week. The former is available to play this game eight to 10 hours a day. Both players will be able to earn the same ship. One can afford to purchase it now and wait for the game to be released the other will have to start out with a starter ship and earn credits, eventually purchasing the exact same ship. Now you say, that's not fair. Player A has it now and player B doesn't. Unfortunately, life is not always fair. Player A has the means to get something that player B wants. There is no patch for life. It happens. What about when the game is released? Player A is going to one-shot player B. This is not likely, but let's assume for a minute that player A is at the very spot where player B starts off his career and is watching, waiting for him to leave the sector so he can kill him. Cloud Imperium, the makers of Star Citizen, have instituted a rock, paper, scissor type mechanic into the game. Warning, this is only hypothetical and for illustrative purposes, so please bear with me. Remember, this is early alpha. Rock, paper, scissors will work like this. Player A has a 300i that he purchased in early alpha by backing the game. Player B has an Aurora starting ship. Assuming this is day one of release and the ships have been balanced out. The 300i will be faster and more maneuverable than the Aurora. But the Aurora will have a faster rate of fire and do more damage per shot. If player A is a better pilot and gunner, then yes, he will win the fight. Conversely, player B might be a better pilot and gunner because his ship 
is slower to turn, it is at a disadvantage, but his superior aiming and firing skills will allow him to kill player A. In this scenario, player A lost because of his inferior skills. Because player B actually has more time to play, he very well might be a better player. A fool in his money and all of that. How can player A hope to win against a player with more time and skill to play? Buy a better ship and hope he has insurance. It all balances out in the end. So what about player C? A rich kid just out of college with 24-7 playtime, lots of skill, and a boatload of money. What is player B going to do against that guy? Run. Sometimes life isn't fair. And discretion is a better part of valor, as they say. Get out of there, you're gonna lose. Years of playing RTS and MOBA games have taught me one thing. There is always someone better out there. Sometimes you deal with a better player and move on. Okay, so that wraps it up for today's episode. Remember, tomorrow night, Wednesday, live on Twitch will be our inaugural StarCast show. It's our Star Citizen podcast. It will be on from 5 p.m. to around 7 p.m. Eastern. The link for the channel will be below. Please follow us on Twitch so you'll be notified when it comes on. If you cannot make it to the episode, it will be on YouTube right afterwards and also available for an audio only download. Thank you for watching today's show. As always, this is Geek Domo saying, see ya. Hit it, hit it, and until it's dead. Whereas, you know, why don't, why don't we have, there's a, a guy who makes amazing Guild Wars 2 videos. His channel is I Am One and I Am Legion. His name's Nemesis, absolutely incredible videos he makes. But he talks about this in one of his videos where he's like, you know, what if you had a big sort of, you know, like a Queen Ant type, a type mob that spawned lots and lots of tiny swarmy mobs. Mm -hmm. So area of effect became a very important part of your combat because you had to take out these big areas. And then you had, you know, other mobs that were very, very high hit points, but like didn't really attack very much, but just, you know, there were physical barriers in the, in the way that tanks are. So you need to either physically move them out of the way or just like burst them down single target. And he comes up with uh, a lot more, <laughs> a lot more uh, suggestions.